How do you feel about evolution? Well, how I feel about it isn't important. What I think about it, better. But uh, uh, it's pretty silly. It's unscientific. Evolution is unscientific? Correct. Okay, and, and can you please enlighten these people on why it's unscientific? What do you mean enlighten you why it's unscientific? It's just unscientific. That doesn't make any fucking sense. No. I don't. Uh, evolution is scientific. If, uh, if someone's making a claim that it is scientific, it's, they have the burden of proof to show it, demonstrate it. Why don't you tell right, me right, how right. it oh, is? Oh, wait, wait, no, no. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, Adam and Eve all just came out and it just popped up, right? Oh, I'm not a and fucking then, prick. And then they point fingers at me. No, no, Why can't no, I'm you be, just saying that you turn it down. Now, just because I disagree with you, you have to be hostile towards me. Why is that? Why is that, folks? Have you thought and considered this? You have not proved that the religious aspect of fucking religion is even valid. Watch your language. So that's a separate issue. No, it's not a separate issue. No, no, you were talking about you were talking about evolution. So who gave birth to Adam and Eve? You tell me. God created him. Ex in the halo. Okay, so where the fuck is God? Right, it just happened. All right, I'm not going to go around and around on the same thing. And you know what? I think right now might be a good time to uh, preach the gospel and hand off to someone else. Um, no, you are, sir. No, no, I'm sorry. Um, At least my scientific basis. No, you don't have a basis for science. And I don't know why you concluded that science is the only way to know things. At least me not knowing something believes in something. And you believing that Adam and Eve gave birth to the world is pretty fucking Well, stupid. actually, genetics show so that to be true. Yourself. So the geneticists disagree with you, sir. Show me. And you All know right. what? It's okay because I didn't give my rep to fucking Eve. You know what? All right. She didn't All give right. her if. Now, you, you, claim that, you claim that atheism. Well, hold on. Before I get to that, I wanted to call everyone out here uh, to consider life and death. This is some sober issues, and it's coming pretty darn quick for every one of us. In fact, uh, the elderly out here, the people who are getting closer to death, will testify to the fact that the closer Amen. you get there, uh, it goes a lot quicker. Time just seems to, man, I, to me, two years ago seems like one year ago. It seems like time's going twice as fast as it should be, and I'm only 30, and they say it gets even worse than that as time progresses. So you need to uh, think about what happens after you die. To be so flippant about something that is going to uh, be, uh, you know, concerning eternity, I, I got to wonder what's going on. Well, it's a spiritual darkness. Well, the Bible says that all men uh, run from God. They, they hate him without cause. And that's because of the sin nature that we receive uh, in Adam. You know, we are made in the image of God, yes. But through the fall, we became tainted. Now there... That's, that's how we look at ourselves in light of the creation and then the fall, but there's also redemption. God came uh, in the form of flesh a little over 2,000 years ago uh, to fulfill that which was from eternity uh, ordained, sacrificing himself for the sins of his uh, children. And so what he calls you to do, what I call you to do, is to examine yourselves in light of what you know already to be true, that you are a sinner, that you've done wrong things, you've violated the law of God, Thou shalt not lie, steal, etc. Examine yourself and repent of those things. Quit doing those things. He commands all sinners everywhere to repent. And that is appointed unto man once to die, and then after this, the judgment. So as much as you don't like the thought of it, or you think it's irrational, or whatever, it's not going to count for a hill of beans on the day of judgment. You will give an account, and uh, you need to repent of those sins and do that which pleases God, instead of doing that which gratifies the flesh. And put your faith and trust in Christ as your only hope uh, for that salvation. And he promises that he will transform your heart, make you a new creation, alive in him, so that you have the ability now to combat sin, be sanctified, and uh, be glorified ultimately in heaven. That's good news, folks. Say what? All right. Wait, wait, wait. All right. You don't have now. to stand here. That's another thing. No, I'm not forcing anybody to stand here. You, you have the right to walk by temporarily in which he does transform me. Does He's that make not sense? Transport you. You're not the, special. I know I'm not that special. Calm down. Exactly. So because why do you think that you get to go somewhere? Well, I, 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 one guy says out here, we're no better than anyone. We're just better off. Okay? Now, and that's why we come out here so we can uh, uh, preach the gospel because the gospel is the power of God into salvation. I would prefer, as much as you're, you're spewing nastiness at me, I would love to see you in heaven, brother. I'm not going to go to heaven because there isn't a heaven. I'm going to go to work. Sadly enough. Right. So, but you know, you it's going anyway, to be different when you die. Anyway, back to the point. Well, it's impossible. Back to the point. You have, you have I don't think I would do it if it were possible. 
here's what a believer does. They look at their life, because we're called to, uh, and this is, by the way, you need to examine yourselves, as Paul says uh, in 1 Corinthians, to, to see if you even be in the faith, a professing believer. Because many will say in that day, Lord, Lord, for I've done this in your name, I've done that in your name. And in the end, he says, depart from me, you who work iniquity, for I never knew you. We have a sad state of affairs in the church today. People do not fight sin. John Owen says, be killing sin or sin will be killing you. I mean, if you look at the, the totally condemning and, and dangerous nature of sin, who would treat it worse than Ebola. Ebola is, man, you would get, ooh, get those germs, or HIV. People will, uh, you know, take extreme measures to stay away from that. They find out someone got, has AIDS, they keep their distance. Why is it we jump so willfully like moths to flames into sin, which will condemn you way worse than Ebola or uh, AIDS will eternally? And so he uses this parallel. We're in spiritual warfare, folks. We should be, if we're professing Christ, be on guard like the soldier with his gun. If he hears a little twig snap, he's got his finger on the trigger ready. If he hears a little cough in the distance, same thing. That's how we should be viewing sin sneaking up on us because it doesn't just happen out of the blue. Oh, da 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 da. Ah, oh, porn, you know? No. It enters the mind first, and once you see the first little inclination towards the sin, you ought to nix it right there. But there's a lot of Christians in the church that don't think of sin that way. And so they ought to question whether they're even saved. The Bible says to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, to make your calling and election sure. So when I look, examine the original tongue, that Greek word many is the same word used for many there be that go into the broad path, which leads to destruction. So it sounds like an awful lot of people within the church body are on the road to hell. And that is why you find people complain, oh, hypocrites in the church. Yeah, of course.